Hey, welcome to episode two of the Real Life English series. In today's episode, I am going to teach you real English vocabulary, real English expressions, and I'm also going to teach you a fluency pattern that you can use today and sound more like a native English speaker when you request something. I also have some quizzes just for you, so I hope you're ready. All right? I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right. So we're going to start off by looking at a situation, a real life situation. Here we have a man and a woman sitting together, looking at their cell phones. Now the woman is probably saying, honey, you are more tech savvy than me. Can you please show me how to work this new phone you bought for me? Now, this is a very natural conversation, a very natural request that this woman is making, but what's the pattern that she used? Let me show you the pattern she used. She said his name or a nickname, which is honey. And I'll explain. Then she gave the reason or the current situation. And finally she made her request. She didn't just immediately make the request. She followed this pattern and this formula. Now I do want to explain something to you really quickly. Honey, you may be asking teacher, what does honey mean? Now, honey is just a term of endearment for someone you love. So for example, my mother will call my father honey or dear. Likewise, my father will call my mother honey or dear. So you can call your spouse, your boyfriend or your girlfriend, Honey. In English, we say honey. Good job. One more time after me, honey. Excellent. All right. Now she also said something that maybe you haven't heard before. She said tech savvy after me, tech savvy. Excellent. Now tech savvy just means well informed about or good at using modern technology. So maybe you are tech savvy. Maybe you are really good at using computers and cell phones and other things. You can say, ah, I'm tech savvy. It makes sense, right? Now look again at what she said. She said, honey, the name, you are more tech savvy than me. She's giving the reason before she makes the request, honey, you're so good with technology, right? Now the request comes. Can you please show me? Right? So what about this last part? Work this. What does it mean to work something? This is again, a real English expression, real life English work. Something means to use something, right? So for example, I have my cell phone right here. I am very familiar with my cell phone. I know how to work it because I've used it for a while. So this individual was telling her husband, Hey baby, Hey honey, you're tech savvy. You're really good with technology. Can you please help me? I don't know how to work it. Makes sense, right? So once again, looking at this image, at this situation, we have the pattern name plus reason or situation plus the request. And this is exactly how you are going to use the pattern as well. Now let me quiz you and see if you remember the words I just taught you. Are you ready for our first quiz? I hope you are. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Quiz number one. Now you only have five seconds for each question. Here we go. Now let's see. The first question is right here. I want you to fill in the blank. Technology is a big part of life. So little kids are very five seconds. All right. Time. What is the answer? Yes, you got it. Exactly. Little kids are very tech savvy. Makes sense, right? A lot of kids, even my four year old niece, she's really good with technology tech savvy. All right, let's see how you do with question number two. Here we go. Question number two, fill in the blank. He just bought a new smart TV for his office. 
but he doesn't know how to? What's the answer? Five seconds. Here we go. All right. Time. What's the answer? Come on. You got it. Exactly. He doesn't know how to work it or use it. Makes sense, right? Excellent job. Excellent. Now let's see another situation that uses the pattern that we learned. Here we go. Here is the next situation. We have again, what looks like a husband and a wife. Now in this situation, the woman is probably saying, Michael, you know that you tower over me. Would you put the meat on the top shelf of the freezer? Pretty please. All right. So we're seeing here that a request is being made, but the woman is using the fluency pattern. Let me show you watch right here. She did what said his name, Michael, then gave the reason Michael, you tower over me. Now, wait a minute. What does tower over me mean? All right. So tower over just means to be much taller than someone or something. The man in the picture is much taller than the lady. Actually, my brother-in-law is about six, two or six, three. He towers over us. He's extremely tall. So again, following the pattern, when you're making a request name, then the reason the woman said you tower over me, you're so much taller than me. Now it's time for the request. She says, would you put the meat on the top shelf of the freezer? Pretty please. Now what does pretty please mean? Again, real life English, English we use. Here we go. Pretty please actually means it's used to ask someone for something or persuading them to do something by sounding friendly. That's right. When you say, Oh, pretty please. You're trying to sound friendly. You're trying to make them see that I really need your help. In English, we do say pretty please. Now guys, you probably don't want to say it, but women and children, we do actually say it. So we say pretty please after me, pretty please. Excellent. Good job. So she said pretty please. Now you already know what time it is. It's time for your next quiz. Let's see if you understood exactly what we just went over. All right. So each question again, remember you have five seconds. So here is the first question right here. Fill in the blank. She likes short guys because tall guys usually mm, her. You ready? Five seconds. What goes in the blank? Here we go. Time. All right. So what goes in the blank? I know you got it. Yes. Very good. Tower over her. She likes short guys because tall guys tower over her. Excellent job. Really good. All right. Now let's go to question number two. Here we go. Number two. Again, the little girl wanted ice cream. What did she say to her mother? She wanted ice cream. What did she say? Here we go. Timer has started. Da, da, da. Time. All right. So what did the little girl say? Come on. I know you got it. Excellent. She said, pretty please. Very good. Excellent job. All right. So again, we had two situations where the individuals followed the fluency pattern for making a request name, reason or situation, and then the request. Well, let's see if it happens in this situation as well. In this situation, we have a woman and she's on the phone and she's probably saying, Hey, Susan, I'm trying to knock out my resume, but it's taking longer than I expected. I know you are the resume guru. So would you mind looking over it for me? Now in this situation, she also used the fluency pattern. Let me show it to you again. The pattern name. Hey, Susan reason or situation. I'm trying to knock out my resume, but it's taking longer than I expected. Now that's the reason and her situation, but 
What does knock out mean? So knock out actually means to complete or finish something. So to knock something out, for example, Ooh, I need to knock out dinner before I go hang out with my friends. I need to complete or make dinner before I go out with my friends. We say knock out something in English, real life English. And now you can also use it. So she's trying to knock out or complete her resume. She also says it's taking longer than I expected. So what does longer than expected mean? It means to take longer than you initially thought it would. So she's giving the reason and she's also giving her situation before she makes her request. This is how you speak English in real life. You don't just immediately make your request. You need to say the name, give the reason or situation, and then make the request. So now she's starting to make the request. After she says, I know you are the resume guru. She then says, so would you mind looking over it for me? That's her request. But what does it mean to look over something? Look over something just means to review or check something for errors. So she's asking her, Hey, I know you're the resume guru. That's the situation. And the reason would you mind just kind of checking my resume? That was the request. So again, she followed the pattern name plus reason or situation, and then the request. So you know what time it is now it's time for your last quiz. Let's see how you're going to do. Here we go. Now we have five questions for this quiz and I know that you are going to do well. Here we go. First, now it's a combination now of everything you've learned. My husband loves computers. He is really, what's the answer? I'm going to give you five seconds. Here we go. Five seconds. Time. You got it. Her husband is what? Come on. I know you asked, you know, the answer. Excellent tech savvy. So good. Excellent job. Her husband is tech savvy. Very, very good. All right. Now let's go to question number two. Here we go. You're doing great so far. Question number two, what is a term that a woman might use to call her husband. What's a term that a woman might use to call her husband. Here we go. Five seconds. Time. All right. What's the answer? What's the term? Come on. Yes. Honey. Excellent. A woman or a man would call their spouse. Honey. Excellent job. Real life English. All right, here we go. Question number three, the basketball player is extremely tall. He blank all of his fans. Woo. What's this answer? Come on. You know it. Five seconds. Let me know the answer. Here we go. Time. What's the answer? You know it. Yes. Excellent job. He towers over all of his fans. He's extremely tall. Very good. Excellent job. All right. Now let's go to question number four. Five. Oh, number four. <laughs> Almost skipped one. Here we go. The little boy said he had to his homework before he could play outside with them. What's the answer? Five seconds. Here we go. Five seconds on the clock. Time. Come on. What's the answer? Tell me what the answer is. Exactly. He had to knock out or complete his homework before he could play outside with them. Now, one more quiz question. Come on. You are doing such a great job. I know you can get this one too. Here we go. Question number five. He bought a new cell phone yesterday, but he still doesn't know how to yet. What's the answer? Five seconds on the clock. Here we go. Time. All right. So tell me, come on. What's the answer? Yes. He doesn't know how to work it yet. 
excellent job. You are amazing. You passed that quiz with flying colors. All right. So I really hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Remember we talked about the pattern. This pattern will help you and it will show you how to speak English fluently. When you want to make a request, remember first part name, second part reason or situation. And finally make your request. Now, if you want to keep studying with me, you can check me out right here, ah, right here, right here. Uh, let's see, follow a plan by going to speak English with Tiffany academy.com. I have plans just for you and you can join and become a member. Or if you want to save time, let's go right here. Save time, go to study with Tiffany.com and you can get my eBooks that are amazing and will help you learn English fast. Or you can go to English with Tiffany, the app, start learning and have fun again. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I will see you next week, but as always remember to speak English. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> okay. I have a good story for you today. This is something that my family talks about all the time. Now I live in Maryland. Okay. And you all know how much I love food. So in Maryland, there are a lot of West Indians, people from Trinidad, people from Jamaica and many other islands. So we have amazing West Indian food here in Maryland. Now my family, we're not West Indian, but we love West Indian food, specifically roti. So the roti we like has cabbage and potatoes and garbanzo beans and vegetables. It's delicious. And all throughout my high school years and college, and even a little bit after college, there was one specific restaurant we used to go to. It was called Caribbean delight. It wasn't too far from my high school. And the owner actually worked with my mother at the hospital. The restaurant was her side business. When I say her roti, Oh, was good. Oh my goodness. It would make you lick your fingers. That's how good the roti was. Now, the thing is my mom knew the owner very well. She was the cook. She was the owner and they were friends at work. There was nothing wrong, but there was one unique quality about this lady. She did not play any games. She was extremely serious. And when you went to her restaurant, you needed to know exactly what you wanted. You need to know what your request was because she didn't have time for small talk. So I remember one specific time I was really craving. I wanted to eat roti. So I drove almost 30 minutes from my house just to pick up some roti from a restaurant. So I arrived at the restaurant and I was going to make my request, right? So I said her name and I said, Hey ma'am, her name. And then I won't say her name here. And then, you know, I said, Hey, I'm here. I really, really wanted to eat some of your food. So I want to order a roti. You see name. I told her why I came and then I made the order, but I had a question. Now I usually just said what I wanted and sat down and waited for it to be given to me after I paid, but I had a few questions. I wanted to know if they could add some vegetable. So I asked her, I said, Hey, I just wanted to know, can this be added? And she looked at me, baby, you get what you pay for. <laughs> she really did not want anything changed on her menu. Now she was not mean, but she did not play games and she did not want small talk. So she said, you want a roti? You can't change anything. So, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I paid my money and I sat down and I waited for my roti to come. So I came home and I told my mom, I was laughing because the food was so good. Now in America, customer service is very important just to help you understand. So usually the customer is always right. If a customer has something they want, then the person will kind of adjust like at subway, you make it your way and they do things your way. 
So usually if you make a request, you want some vegetable changed, people will do that, but not this lady. She said, you get what's on the menu or you get nothing at all. And we all continued to go to her restaurant because her food was so good. So we always have jokes about her because she did not play. Don't change the menu, get whatever's on the menu. And people loved her food. Now she's no longer here. She got sick, unfortunately. And so we're not able to get her food anymore, but we have these funny memories of her because she did not really match the typical American uh, food culture. She did not let you have what you wanted. If you wanted to change anything, she said, no you get what's on the menu. <laughs> so maybe there are some people in your country that are like that just one way. They won't change at all. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the story guys. I hope you have an awesome week and I will see you next time. Don't forget to check me out. If you want to keep studying with me, love you all. And I'll talk to you later.